In this video, I'm talking about five strategies for exiting non-performing mortgage notes. Number one is getting a reinstatement. Um, this is when a borrower basically gets the loan caught back up by making some large payment and then resuming payments. Um, this can happen a variety of ways. Typically, the most common way it happens for me is just without me actually doing anything. Sometimes you buy a loan, there's a transfer, and the borrower's figured out how to get things back on track, and you just get kind of lucky. Other times, you have a conversation with the borrower about potential workouts, and they say, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and reinstate. It doesn't happen very often. It's not something you really have control over, so it's not like a strategy in terms that you can plan on it. But it does happen sometimes more often than you would think. Exit number two is loan modification. So this is when the borrower was maybe not able to afford the payments they have, and you're going to adjust the terms of the loan to get to something that they can't afford to pay to get the loan cash flowing again. Um, and sometimes when the borrower is really far behind, as part of the modification, what you can do is account for past due interest that's accrued, maybe back taxes or other insurance or other things that the lender has had to pay and you roll this into an overall deal and you reset the loan so now the borrower is no longer at risk of foreclosure and they have a payment that they can afford to make number three is deed in lieu or, or sometimes called cash for keys a deed in lieu is basically when the borrower signs over the deed in lieu of going through the foreclosure process now, sometimes if a borrower is ready to move on, especially if they have negative equity, they might just sign a deed in lieu sometimes. Or what's kind of more common is to give the borrower an incentive to do this, you'll make some kind of payment to them. That's why it's often called cash for keys. So sometimes what you can do is say to the borrower, look, I'll pay you some money that will cover your first month's rent somewhere new and maybe some moving expenses in exchange for handing over the keys and moving on. One of the big considerations in this, or one of the nice things if you can do this is, on one hand, you know, I understand that you're giving cash to a borrower who's not making payments. Doesn't seem right in a lot of ways, it's kind of not. But from the perspective of you being the lender, it can be a lot faster and a lot less expensive than going through the foreclosure. So that's a big reason why you might want to try to attempt this strategy. Now, one word of caution on this is borrowers who are very quick to do a cash for keys. A lot of times I've found that means that there's something wrong with the property and that's why they're ready to go. Either I've, I've had ones like this where there was a big crack in the foundation or a problem with the roof, or I had one borrower that was suddenly excited to leave when it was late in the fall and it was getting cold. And then I found out that, um, the furnace had died but it can really be a good strategy overall to speed up your timeline save some money shorten your deal cycle overall number four is proceeding with foreclosure so just like the bank would do if the borrower isn't making payments you can't come to any terms to either modify the loan or get it reinstated and the borrower isn't willing to just sign the deed over now you have to go through your legal process and follow through on the foreclosure. So this means hiring an attorney to handle this for you. Now, as far as what this will cost or how long it will take will vary very widely depending on, number one, on the state that you're in. Um, states like Texas are very fast, not that expensive. If you're in New York or New Jersey, it could take potentially a couple of years and cost you know in excess of $10,000 potentially. And the other big X factor in foreclosure is whether or not the borrower is going to fight you. If the borrower makes really any attempt to fight, that can really increase your timeline and increase your cost. So it's something to consider. However, what I often have happen when I try to work something out with the borrower, can't come to any resolution. So I start to go down the foreclosure process. Sometimes borrowers realize they are actually going to lose the property and they don't want to and then sometimes they end up reinstating or coming back to the table to work out some other terms 
And then strategy five is just selling the note. So this is not a strategy that I employ, but what a lot of the note investors do is they'll buy a non-performing note, approach the borrower, and when I say approach the borrower, they're typically doing that through their loan servicer or someone else, especially if you're a new note investor, I do not suggest reaching out directly to the borrower. Um, but when their loss mitigation efforts have failed, instead of proceeding with a foreclosure and taking back the property, they just give up and sell the note to someone else. Now, if you do this, the downside is you're probably going to take some kind of small loss because you have some transaction costs. Um, because the note's gone some period of months while you've owned it and it, maybe it's still not performing, it could be worth a little bit less. You're typically taking some kind of a haircut if you try this approach. The reason some people do it and the potential advantage is you don't end up with the property. So what I've found is that when you do go through with a foreclosure, um, you know, oftentimes the people, the borrowers who just buy the ship down in a foreclosure, it's not that they're deliberately damaging the, pro the, the property, but they tend to live a pretty rough lifestyle. You know, they neglect their finances, they neglect their loans, and they tend to neglect their property. So typically when you get an REO back, it's worth less than you thought it was going in. It's not always the case. I find when I end up with REOs, my range of outcomes is really wide. I've had some epic home runs, and I've gotten upside down on more than one of them as well. So the advantage of selling the note is um, takes away the possibility that you run into a hoarder house with waist deep trash, a bad roof, a cracked foundation. By the way, those are all things that I've run into <laughs> with REOs. Um, however, the reason I don't subscribe to this is I like, if I do have to foreclose, I like to take it all the way to the mat because what I've had happen on numerous occasions is some borrowers have to be pushed all the way to the brink where they realize they're going to lose the property. And then sometimes they magically reinstate at the last minute. So it's kind of amazing how I've had borrowers where maybe the loan payment was only three or $400 and they would not make that payment to save their life. And then all of a sudden you get all the way up to the end of a foreclosure and they cough up five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 to reinstate the loan. So there are many different strategies that you can employ. I don't know that two note investors employ it the exact same way. And these five are by no means uh, the only five exit strategies to pursue. There are a number of others, but there's some of the common ones. And purpose of this is to give you an idea of the types of things to be thinking about if you're looking at picking up a non-performing note, which you might be able to do with it. So if you want to learn more, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel youtube.com slash fusion notes or click the little thingy in the bottom right you can also visit our website at fusionnotes.com we've got other free information and materials and things to help you along with learning how to invest in notes thanks